Hello folks, I'm Dave, that's Scott, and we are here today on Old Ass Movie Reviews. We are reviewing a great story, Soylent Green, from 1973. I thought it was 72 initially, but IMBD says 73. I'll go with that. Starring Charlton Heston and Edward G. Robinson. Um, I know this movie like the back of my hand. And I, 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 I know what I think about it. You said you didn't see it or you... I had never seen it. I've always known, always known the premise. Everybody right. knows the catchphrase, Soylent Green is people. You know where right. it comes from and it is a pop iconic mm -hmm. pop culture moment. Right. Um, but that being said, I had never, ever seen the movie um, until just now. Yeah. <laughs> So now I'm uh, dying to know <laughs> what did you think of the overall premise? The overall premise I really like. I'm I'm watching this movie, and by the time it got over, I was thinking, wow, I want a miniseries. Mm -hmm. I want a miniseries that expands a lot. There is a lot here. There's a universe that's created, and this is one of the really cool things that the filmmakers did is just in the opening as the credits are coming in and as it's opening right. you're seeing you're seeing basically what happens to the planet and right. earth right. and they're just showing a transition of through time and everything to show that uh a lot of time has passed and we've moved into the future all the way to 2022 where we have overpopulation pollution no food nothing's growing but we're supposed to be eating seaweed which it's not seaweed and uh, um because that's failed too this movie has a lot of messages in it there's a lot of allegory and a lot to unpack that i'm going to require a few more viewings this is one where i was like okay i need to rent this or do i buy it and buy it. i bought it i yes. bought it Thank you. I bought it yeah, because I, I always regret that. just renting one of these because it's like, I've got to go back and watch it. Now I got to rent it again. But this one I bought, I do feel I'm going to have to watch it a few more times because there's a lot here, man. A when lot. you start picking it apart, whenever you start really looking at the story and, and how deep it is, it, it's, it's amazing. It is a really well put together story. It's really well written. It is solid. It is a solid story. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things are kind of funny, and I don't mean funny, ha ha, but there is a movement now, very slow, very low key, trying to get people to eat other people right now. Trying to just say it's okay to eat people. Cannibalism. It's okay. Let's do it. It is. It's very, it's very weird. And it's, they owe some, some asshole. Politician always lets something like this slip out, and I'm like, "Did they just say what I think they said?" Yeah, they usually do. They usually you look do. Into it and you're like, "Oh, you, you guys said the quiet part out loud." Yeah, the, um, the stuff they're not. So supposed there is to. like some weird shit going on with that, and then you see how our food supply is being destroyed by, let's just say, not natural sources. How many airplanes crash into food food processing plants, know, right? and then they don't rebuild the food processing plants? How many chicken coops have been destroyed? How many chicken laying facility, egg laying facilities have been wiped out? Um, so I'm sitting here putting two and two together, like, oh, yeah, just gonna keep following this, keep following this trail right here. Yeah. And where does that trail lead? It went, led right to the government in the movie, and it leads right to the government in our, in our yeah, reality. and that's it's that's really what I'm weird. Is all I'm saying. Well, th that's what I'm saying for the '70s. I mean that they, they're. They're covering stuff that was relevant then and yeah. is relevant now because, like anything, we never pay attention to history. Um, yeah. You know, we no, nope. so it's always repeated. It's uh, so you yeah. have you have so many stories going on in here. You have obvious class uh, mm -hmm. issues here with the rich and the oh, poor, yeah. and there is no there's no middle. There's no real well, there is a middle, but the middle is so low. Yeah. And then there's well. the bottom. 
yeah, yeah, that where you're sleeping on stairs and everything. I thought that was kind of good the way they did it. This is they is like they borrowed the set of Sesame Street to film this because that's what I thought of when I saw the street. And it's like, where's Oscar? Uh, but it's, it, they, yeah, it, <laughs> Oscar had to eat something um, because the garbage trucks were being used to pick up bodies. I uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to explain this movie to give a quick synopsis. You're set in 2022. This is a murder mystery. Um, a multi-billionaire guy winds up being murdered in his apartment. You see the murderer. You see the murderer being hired. You see the murderer actually almost introducing himself to the billionaire that he's there to kill. He's yeah. like, "Is this right?" And the murder and the billionaire looks at him and says, "It's it's not right, but it's a necessity." And he allows himself to be killed by this guy. Enter Charlton Heston's character, who's a cop who's investigating the murder. Mm -hmm. Now, what I thought was funny and very telling of how bad it is is the way he treated the furniture the the female character uh, oh yeah really and, and see that's Cheryl. a whole that's a whole nother story once you find yeah. out who she is that she really is a piece of furniture that comes with the apartment comes as the apartment. for the next tenant and it's like wow here's a whole nother backstory <laughs> but as he's walking around and doing his you know little investigation he's checking out the ice you know he's like fuck there's ice like, yeah you got ice and just the little things, the food. Yeah, just the shit that you take advantage of. And he just, he he empties out a pillowcase and he's just throwing shit into the pillowcase as he's walking around this apartment. And nobody's saying shit. She ain't questioning it. She's not saying anything. The guard nope. is not saying anything. It, it's just very telling on how bad it is. And he gives a percentage to the guy from the morgue that comes to pick up the body. He gives a percentage to his manager or the, or his mm -hmm. captain when he goes to you know get yeah. report, but he immediately is being followed and he knows he's being followed and he because he's a good cop he's he's about as honest of a cop I think as you in could that expect universe <laughs> that you could get yeah you know what I mean like he's got mm -hmm. integrity it's it's questionable integrity of course but. If I was going to be in that universe and I needed a guy to help protect me, that'd be the cop that I'd go to. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Because that, that's just it. And that's that's one of the things that makes this movie require multiple viewings. Yes. You watch. You see the condition the police live in. You see the precinct. That poor police captain, it must have been 200 degrees. That man was just dripping the whole time. Uh, yeah, that But guy. it's... Oh, um but you you see it, and when his uh, friend who lives in his house, uh, the older guy Saul. Oh no, uh, that's not his. That's not just his friend. Saul is the book. Did you not hear him? Yes. How he referred to Saul. Saul is the book. Mm -hmm. That's that's his computer, for lack of a better. Pretty term. much. That, yes. That's Saul is the guy and who again, read all this shit, and he's so old, he knows all this shit that he's asking the guy. I'm glad you I'm, I'm glad you said that. You calling Saul a computer is the perfect analogy. Mm -hmm. I have that in my head. I knew what his role was, but I was right. just going for the um for the point I was going for is when they just had like a piece of lettuce and a little bit of food and how much they spent on that. Again, yeah. this is incredibly well written, well acted, well shot. Well directed. It says so much. This this movie is this is a deep movie, man. It's Cat it's did, good. I want to get back to him taking all the all yes. the stuff. He yes. goes home. That this is where Scott was talking about. He goes home. He's still investigating. He's just you know whatever. But he takes all the stuff that he got from his investigation. In air quotes. Goes home to Saul. Saul is played by uh, Edward G. Robinson, one of the greatest actors of all time instantly recognizable instantly recognizable absolutely he is referred to as a book saul is he's all the knowledge that charlton heston's character uh detective thorne would need he goes to saul and can, asks questions can i stop you a second yeah look at this 
1973. This was probably written a little bit before. Right. Um, somebody's thinking, what would you have? How would you get a bunch of information? Well, I will have right. a guy who is super knowledgeable and everything, not realizing they're describing a computer that everybody mm -hmm. will have in right. 2022. I'll continue. I'm sorry. I just thought find that fascinating. <laughs> but they had computers in the 70s. And if you remember in a lot of yeah. a lot of the sci-fi of the time, computers were taking over everything, which is what that is true. That is true. That's a whole other subject. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, a good point. Good point um, so, that they did. But they but... don't have power to run the computers. So what would you have? You'd have Saul. You'd have a book. You'd have. And I'm not convinced that Thorne knew how to read. I'm not sure if Thorne knew how to read. Yeah. The only thing that, thank God, did one of the things that didn't take off in 2022 um, were those writing pads that they were using, were those little uh, magnetic oh, yeah, the, sheet things that you pick up yeah. and it erases. And they even had the little yeah. the little pins. It's like, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's OK. I see why that looked cool then. Yeah. But guys, we don't do that. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God we don't do that. I, I would never remember anything if I wrote that, wrote anything down on one of those pads. Yeah. Oh, I bumped it. Um, but when Saul sees the meat, he's basically crying. He's just like, what the hell have we come to? What? And yeah. it's through Saul's eyes, the old man's eyes, you see us. You see what we're looking at now, what we've grown up through. Mm -hmm. We've seen birds. We've seen the rivers. We went fishing. We want, you know, waded in mud puddles. Saul has all those memories. The character of Thorn doesn't. I mean, oh. it's only 2022. Thorn is old enough. He should have remembered that. But the way I'm taking it, their story took place was a lot of destruction happened in Thorn's childhood. So Thorn yeah, but he may not yeah. anything. He doesn't remember um, anything but the way it is now. Yeah. So you have Saul who remembers everything. And he's basically crying. But he cooks a great dinner. I mean, they're all happy. They're having a, it's like a feast. It's a good moment. This is a, this is a feast billionaires eat. But Kat pointed out one thing. When that meat is in the locker and he opens it up, he goes, there you go, Miss Cheryl. Kat went, that's somebody's rib cage. That's a human. That and was my thought, too. You know, in all the times that I've watched this movie, I never thought that that was a human body part. I just assumed because the guy says it's beef, it's yeah. a piece of beef. Where are you getting it's beef? <laughs> that's just it. I never thought about it. It was just yeah. this is what it is. That's what it is. But then again, those billionaires may have shit yeah. that nobody else has got. Oh, absolutely. But, but when she said that, I was just like, oh, my God, you're right. Where? You know, then again, this guy was a billionaire, so he probably would have had the money to get real beef. But it's quite why, possible. There's bits of the world that we don't know it? about. Yeah, yeah, like which is where I would put a sequel. I would set the sequel in um, Brock Peterson's character, who played the Chief Hatcher. Yeah. Of of course, I would get Denzel Washington to play the part because God, God bless Denzel Washington. But anyway. For the sequel, I would just have it go off, and he would no disagreement. The, he would take over the the investigation and start trying to find out what's really going on. But back to the story, and not my uh, fanfic. Charlton Heston is still being followed. He goes to Brock Peterson. He says, "Hey, you know, tell me what's going on." Brock pulls him off the off the case. Says, "You're pulled from the case. Don't worry about it. We're gonna." He says, "I can't sign off on this. You know, they're." This is my this is my career. If I well, sign off on this and somebody questions it, I'm dead. I got nothing. It's it's important to note that pressure is being applied on the police. Yeah. Uh yeah. to to shut this thing down or else they're going to take care of it. Um mm -hmm. which is who's who's been following Charlton Heston's uh character. Um this this is you know, you started off saying it's, it's a hoot, it's a murder mystery, but mm -hmm. with not really in the aspect that we're not we don't we already know who did it. We already mm -hmm. know the weapons. We already know where it's the why. But, but that's which is not what's, the murders I'm even talking about. Yeah. Like it's right. not the initial murder that you're that's the mystery. You, but you it's, think it is. 
That, yes. Because that's the way that sh- that's what I'm saying. How well that's what I'm saying. The why of that the why yeah. of that initial miss murder yeah. is the the whole impetus for the for the movie is the why that first murder happened but you you know it's it's, it's very untraditional uh mm-hmm. mis- murder mystery and right. i like it for that and whenever two of the things that he brings back to saul is these oceanography books that were done by the soylent corporation in 2015 2018 mm-hmm. and then 2018 to 2019 and those were the, like the last books ever done yeah, and Saul's reading them, and he takes them to what he calls the exchange. The exchange is a bunch of other old people that are all books. They're all these old people who know everything. It think of like the uh, I always thought of them as like a Supreme Court. Like that's how I thought of it when I saw it. It's like, hmm, this is an interesting did, group. Did you recognize? Uh, I wonder if she's on here on the list. The did answer is rec- no. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Who? The exchange leader, the woman who says, we will do this and we will find out what is going on. No, who who, who, who who was it? Celia Lovsky. She's the head Does Vulcan. She is the head Vulcan whenever Spock goes to to become a full uh, Vulcan. Get oh, rid of yeah. Those emotions. She's the woman standing there saying, Spock, what is wrong? And he's, he's looking up in space and she drops the... Yeah. The charm and just turns her back and says, You must leave and just walks away. That's her. Oh my Spoke God. Trek reference, folks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. It's been a while since we've had a truck reference. Dick, Dick Van Patten was in this movie. Yes. I don't know how big of an actor he was at the time, but I know that I recognized him when I saw this movie. Well, I was trying to time. figure it out. Thank you for mentioning his name. You're talking, he was at the. Um, where Saul went to uh, die, right? Yes. Yes, that's... Now, see, that, again, here is another thing. We have these... A huge clinic set up so people, when they're ready, they can just go in. They will have a nice, peaceful passing. And the way they right. set it up was... The way for me to describe it, if this was done today, it would be they would hand them a VR headset, they would put it on, and they would be transported into an, a world. And right. that's kind of what... They had a 360... Uh, film uh, cinema and if you've ever right. been in a 360 cinema it does feel like you're really in yeah. there so yeah. um, so it was a neat concept but yeah when you said Dick Van yeah. Pat but again that's very telling of where society was at that point and mm-hmm. and what they were doing with the bodies <laughs> and the the books when after they read the books Saul goes and they're talking and this is how Saul finds out What's going on at the Soylent Corporation? And he can't handle it. He's he's gotten to a point. He's I would guess that Saul's got to be almost in his 90s at this point. Yeah. He's supposed to be yeah. really, really old. And Saul just writes Thorne a note and says, I'm going home. Thorne knows what that means, because as soon as Thorne sees the note, he, he goes off. rushing down to the Whatever you want to call it, whatever that the Kevorkian Center. It looked, yeah, the Kevorkian <laughs> Center. It looked like a gigantic stadium, like football stadium or something. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's something that I should know because I lived up in New York for so long. Uh, but that's, he's running, and there's just a straggler, old people going in there, you know, getting their name, and he runs in. He's got his his badge, which a cop badge in that time in this universe will get you anywhere. <laughs> yeah. pretty much and anything. And everybody just went okay <laughs> back it up um so he runs and he finds saul and he's trying to find out you know trying to like oh, say his goodbyes at least yeah and that's me every time i watch this scene every time even when i was a little kid i cry mm-hmm. like a little girl with a skin knee i i well up because you have Edward G. War Robinson, a really good actor, mm. really good. Charlton Heston played Moses for crying out loud. Ben Hur, you can't argue. And he, the panic and the the grief on his face, and you hear part of the conversation initially, and then the speaker dies, so you can't hear Saul anymore. But then they lower it down, like you can still kind of hear him. And then his voice starts going down and lower and lower where you can't really hear him, but you see the expression on Charlton Heston's face. He's got these ear 
headphones on. Yeah, he's listening to him. We can't and hear it anymore. Soul, Soul is telling him what's going on. Soul tells him why he's killing himself and what's going on with the Soylent Corporation. And you just see Thorn worse than dumbstruck. I would say terrified. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe that? Yeah, I mean, did, did you I, did you well up? I'm just curious. You and I usually well it was up a touchy. No, areas. not not yeah. not particularly. Uh, oh, I however, um, I understand it is a very touching scene. Yeah. It's a very well well done scene. Um, I maybe my heart's just a little hard today when I watch that scene, but uh, yeah, it was. But uh, it was Flint. definitely. I, do what? Flint. <laughs> Your heart is made of flint. <laughs> yeah, brimstone. But uh, yeah, it's it is a hell of a scene. It shows, yeah. and that's that's just it. I wish I could convey that every bit of this movie is purposeful. Yes. Every yeah. shot has a purpose. There is nothing wasted in this movie. Uh, every scene show, tells a story. And it's like, wow. That's, even it's the, impressive. Even the character of Cheryl. Yeah. Wait, I think I think Leah Taylor Young is still acting. I think she's still out there. She's probably fairly old now, but she's. I think she's still out there acting. Who could have been and would have probably in most cases been a throwaway character. Mm -hmm. She's kind of integral. Because Thorne, who's never loved anybody, who you just know this guy's just again, a, another damn story. <laughs> I mean, and again, there there's my takeoff from if I were gonna write a sequel, dude. She, there's so she much Patrick would go and get Cheryl and say, what's going on? Because he knows about her. But anyway. She could have been a throwaway character. She was not. Thorne loved her. He actually calls her and says, hey, you know, just stay where you're at. You know, you got to stay safe. You got to. And she's just with this new scumbag. This, this guy, I would have thrown out a fucking window. This this new tenant. I hated that guy the moment you like. Oh, dude, like, I think we're supposed to. I think we're oh, supposed yeah, to. You're supposed to definitely because this old the old guy that was with her treated her I, like a girlfriend or treated I, her like a wife. I thought they might have been a. A couple. That's well, how the energy well, was. See that, and that's how I always took it. Like yeah. he was always going to take care of her, and had he been able to set anything up, I think if he would have had more time to set Cheryl up, he would have. He yeah, made sure she she didn't have to do that anymore. But I think time was very short with him, and I don't think he had time to do what he really wanted to do. Well, see, this is Maybe. that character Simonson, I believe, was the yeah. name. Um, yeah. I would love to see a prequel and I would love to see his story right up to this because he knew oh, when he find out what's going on, when he found out what he had a part in, what he, he basically helped usher in this where we're eating people and he couldn't yeah. live with himself. I yeah. would love to see that story go up into there. But here's the thing. I would love to see Cheryl's story up into that. Every character in this movie has a story. Saul has a story. There's, this this screams television series, uh, long format uh, storytelling. See, and I wouldn't want to see. I'm a little different from you. I would not want to see a prequel. I would want to see a really done adaptation or a sequel. Sure. And I would try. I'll take both. It, <laughs> I would try and keep it as close to the same gritty film quality yeah. and everything. I mean, everybody's sweating. Everything. This thing hot. is dirty. This movie is dirty, haze. man. Yeah, everything had a yellow haze over it. It was so beautifully shot. Who was the cinematographer on here? I don't know, but they were brilliant. It's the, beautiful. The director was Richard Fleischer. The writers were Stanley R. Greensburg and Harry Harrison. Um, I want to see who the yeah. There's there's some really great great shots in here. Cinematography was Richard H. Klein. That name sounds, sounds familiar. familiar. I think we've come across his name more than once. We probably have, uh, especially from the, this time frame. Some of the visuals in this are just so really well done. There's early on when the guy who's going to kill Simonson has got to like pick his way into the cement and climb up. Yeah. And there's, they do the spark shot. And I looked over at Kat and I said, you know, I never noticed it before, but that that's very telling. That's setting the entire mood 
and what universe and what how bad off the, the world is in that one shot. And she looked over, she said, what do you mean? I said, that's the New York skyline there. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's all dark. Well, a couple of lights here and there. If you've never been to New York, folks, if you've never seen the skyline, it's never dark. The vibe that is not I a city got that goes fucking dark. <laughs> at that op- at that opening scene, I was getting Escape from New York vibes. Yeah, yeah. Because there was a that, wall that where the rich people were, and they weren't just they, rich. They were. They were on a whole nother level of asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They weren't just rich guys. They were fucking. Scumbag, they were not guys. good people at all. No. Um, and so um, again, another telling in this story. Yeah. Message after message after message, and not a one of them is really swung with a hammer. So yeah, it's like one of them is beating you on the head with the hammer, saying you have to believe you have to. Do it's just like right wow, here. what is this? This is there's so much here. I I'm, I I was in shock. He. Uh, after Saul tells him what's going on, he runs out. And he's like, just that whole scene in the in the uh, in the factory. Yeah, there's a. I don't know if you noticed. I want to see if I can find it. Um, I wrote myself a little note about the <laughs> sounds. The sounds of the machinery in the plant. Uh huh. It was just a. Uh, it was almost like it starts out like a machine kind of sound i don't even know how to describe it uh-huh. and then it's like boom, 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 boom. it's almost like the the internal movements of a body like the uh-huh. heartbeat the the blood rut i that's all i can ever think of when i hear the the sound effects of this back i was i was thinking it almost like, sounded futuristic space alien type of noises yeah. it's like what it's is like this but now that you, when you say that, it makes sense for the vibe of what's going on. Your heart's yeah. pumping. He's cli- they're climbing the ladders. He's he's knocking bitches off the ladder left and yeah. right. And it's, you know, it's like See those guys. Yeah, and the bodies floating in the vast tanks. Yeah, I assume that those are that's like some kind of cleanser. They're purifying the body before they process it. And that's why I want to know more. That's why yeah. I want a prequel. I want to see it all go up to that. Um, that's crazy. But this, he, yeah, he's not giving up. He he knows he's a dead man. I think at some point he had to have looked around and went, I'm a fucking dead man. There is nowhere I'm hiding. Yeah. And of course, the way they end the movie, he's still alive. Yeah. But I always assume that he's dead. Like five minutes within five minutes, he's dead. Probably. Um, but I would like to, I would like to see what goes on. Well, and and I and that two movies that I I want to know what happened next. This one deserves a sequel. Out. This one deserves a remake. I think it can be tastefully done because um, I just like to see it brought up um, and keeping it that gritty, but having a little yeah. more modern. Because it is hard sometimes to watch something that's supposed to be showing the time. Right. Uh, as what we know has happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. There would have been cell phones, there would have, but they had no way of knowing exactly where it was going to go in that, that point. So, well, well, let's just say we have cell phones and everything and everything just crashes. You don't have any electricity. You know what? You have a point. You have a point. And thanks for making me an idiot for a second. But no, anyway, no, I, I'm not trying there's, to there's no, no it, it's there's, true. <laughs> I don't even think they have the only guys who seem to have regular phones. That's right. We're the rich people. You're right. So there wouldn't have been his call. Nobody. So that was that's actually that's actually telling of how how bad everything actually is. You're right. Because but I would. Anyway, I'd like to see a reimagining of it uh, with with a more updated what we would think in the future would look like it would be neat um to see that i'd like to see a sequel and i'd love to see it just build up and see what how how it got there there's a there's a whole universe here that is screaming to be told but to answer your point about charlton heston no (laughs) he's being carried out in a gurney he's been shot to hell and that's when he's screaming soil and green is people soil and green is people he either survived and we got more story to tell and people started to listen or they're like who is that idiot? They ignore him as he died in the next room and things go on their way, you know? So something happened. 
<laughs> I always took it like, like watching it because he's telling uh, his boss. He's telling the they chief. Said he told him to go to the um, yeah, you to, the, go to the, the group, yep, the, exchange, the exchange. Yes. And Brock Peters is such a good fucking actor. Yeah, he, he is. always plays an overly hot and sweaty guy. Does he? Maybe he's just Everybody naturally that way. That poor bastard. Uh, <laughs> in the Star Trek movies, he played the uh, Commodore. That's you know? where I recognize him. Yeah. It's the nose. It's the was also from the pro- in, yes. To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh damn! The guy that was in To Kill a Mockingbird, um, which has I think started out his career. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, that was his first movie. Yeah. I could be wrong. Really good actor. Correct me on that, folks. If you know what movie Brock Sampson, Brock Sampson. Brock Peters was first in. Uh, I think it was To Kill a Mockingbird. But he's telling him what to do. That's your sequel. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Follow him. This guy. Yeah. I, I hate to yeah. say it because Thorne's such a good character, but he's the one who gets everything rolling. And you can have Brock Peters' character yeah. go off and go to the exchange. He can find all but one of the exchange people still alive. Like they, Like somebody went in and killed them all. Yeah, and he finds like the old lady, and she tells him, "Hey, look, this is, this is what's going on. Here are the books. Like she had had him hidden. So that's your takeoff from that point. Is it? That's it true. becomes his story, and he's like, "Well, I got to go get the Cheryl girl because she's got to know something, even if she doesn't. You know, you show him going and getting her. You can actually have him just knock the shit out of that guy, throw him off a cliff or something. Because huh. yeah. I just want to see that guy die." <laughs> He's a prick, and you know he is. Yeah, you know he is, and you wanted to see nice. <laughs> when he finally when he called her, and she wanted to go with him. Yeah. Um. So there's there's so many stories here. I have never never watched a movie that just set up so many plot lines, I such know. a huge universe in an hour and a half. You've got the workings of a, a whole universe, and it's it's really really good. Within really good. Five minutes, they have everything set up that you yeah. need to know. Pretty much. Five minutes. Five Pretty much, it's artfully minutes. done, and you get it. You understand it. Nobody That's... writes a writes scripts this tight anymore. No. And they need to. They need to get no. back to old school script writing. Yeah, a where story, you needed to have it. A plot. Heroes, villains, anti-hero. I mean, I would think that Thorne is kind of an anti-hero. Like yeah, I said. He's... He's He's not a good guy, but he's in a situation where he's a great character. A nice guy. He's he's um, he's he's a vigilante. Yes and no. He, he is a cop. A vigilante, I think. Yeah. But he eventually. It just shows the police are not supported. <laughs> they, they the police themselves don't have anything. They get a place to live, but boy, it yeah. ain't much. Yeah. Um, they, eat. yeah, it's they every scene does its bit to drive home the conditions of this movie, the conditions of the people, the politics, everything. It's just, um, it's this, there's always those movies that you watch and you'll think about for days. This is one of them that will yeah. just keep gnawing at me for a while. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend Soylent Green. I absolutely recommend Soylent Green. Follow the plot threads, follow the lines, watch it more than once. And it's you'll gonna find need it. something new. Yeah, you'll find something new in every watching, I think. It's it's just really well done. Really, really well done. Um, but yeah, I can say no more about this movie. I really can't. It's awesome. a great movie. Watch it, watch it, watch it. It's a classic. Perfect. All right, folks, we will continue on with some old ass movies next week. In the meantime, do us a favor, hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend, tell a phone, tell a, tell your mom. I don't know. Anyway, catch you all next week.